Hi, our names are Aditya and Oasika, and today we will be talking about the following topics, energy transfer, convection currents, wind patterns, and the Coriolis effect. Starting with convection currents, they are the circular motion of fluids that occur in a vertical circular fashion in our hydrosphere, in our biosphere, and atmosphere. To continue, you need to understand fluids, the particle theory, and heat. Fluids, by definition, are substances that are either in liquid or gaseous state, like water and air. The particle theory states that particles are always in motion and move faster when they are energized through a common method like heating. Soon, the particles move faster and further apart from each other. Heat is a common way of energizing particles. Heat always rises and is the reason why after warming a cup of water, the top layer is always hotter than the bottom. Continuing on with the lesson, convection currents are formed when the sun emits light and heat to an area on earth. The heat is transferred to everything in the area through a means of energy transfer known as radiation. So now everything in that area is being heated, from trees to bodies of water. So now, the air particles are being energized and are moving faster and further apart from each other. But now to continue, you need to understand density and air pressure. Density, by definition, is the degree of compactness of a substance's structure. And air pressure, by definition, is the force exerted on a surface using air. There are two types of air pressure, high and low, and two types of density, high and low. High density is when the particles are cramped together, and low density is when the particles are spread apart. High density air always has a higher air pressure because it exerts a larger force on a set surface area because of their cramped particles, whereas low density air always has a lower air pressure because it exerts a lower force on a set surface area because the particles are spread, therefore spreading out the force. Also, low density substances always rise when surrounded by high density substances, and high density substances always sink when surrounded by low density substances. So continuing on with the lesson, when the particles are energized, they spread and become less dense, therefore having a low air pressure. Those particles then rise due to, their, to, due to their low density, and as they do, they slowly lose energy. And as they lose energy, their particles start coming closer, and soon they become dense and start to sink. Once they reach their original altitude, they are reheated and the process repeats. Convection currents are formed all across the planet. Some are generally warmer and cooler than others because it all depends on the surface area available for the sun's energy to be distributed across. Small surface areas like the equator result in higher temperatures and larger surface areas like the poles result in lower temperatures because the energy is more equally spread. Since air flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure, basically from the poles to the equator, this creates wind. And when there are patterns of winds, like so, we will have certain wind patterns. Because the wind always flows from high pressure to low pressure, creating a certain pattern. Normally, they would go in a straight line from the pole to the equator. But something called the Coriolis effect causes it to curve around the Earth's circumference as it reaches its target. The Coriolis effect is basically caused by the Earth's rotation. Since the Earth rotates clockwise, it creates a spin on the wind that causes it to deflect eastward around the Earth. Now, because of the Coriolis effect, the areas of Earth have certain wind patterns and the currents that always flow a certain direction. Here are the names. Polar winds, the westerlies, the northeast trade winds, southeast trade winds, the westerlies, and the polar winds. Convection currents affect and change our climate because they distribute energy and maintain a certain temperature in our three spheres. By maintaining temperature in a certain way, they change our climate by giving that area a certain type of weather. For example, in the poles, convection currents maintain the cool temperature, and by doing so, they give that area a cool, dry, and snowy weather, therefore changing the climate. Convection currents also affect our climate because they create wind. Since wind carries almost everything in the atmosphere to its destination, if the wind passes over a hot and polluted city, it will carry the pollutants and the heat to the destination, and it will slowly destroy the ecosystem, environment, and its habitants. For example, the melting of the ice caps caused by the wind flying over heated cities over the equator, carrying that heat and to melt the ice caps, and that changes the temperature and raises water levels. That also kills the habitants, like the polar bears. Convection currents also affect and change our climate because they also occur within the mantle, using molten lava as a fluid. 
As the currents move, the motion causes the tectonic plates to move as well, and when those plates collide, volcanoes are usually formed. Those volcanoes, if they explode, release ash and heat into the air. That changes the temperature of surrounding areas, the temperature of the winds, and causing the area to be warmer and the surrounding areas to have different weathers. Convection currents also affect and change our climate because it creates a current known as El Nino. This is an extremely hot current when it passes over the ocean. It slowly p picks up the water, causing it to evaporate, and then soon it causes precipitation in the ocean and in surrounding cities. Now it's time for the demos. They will help reinforce some important basic concepts. Okay, so in this demo that I'm conducting, it'll be about convection currents. It includes hot water, cold water, and red and green food coloring. The red food coloring will be used to represent the hot water, and the green food coloring will be used to represent the cool water. Throughout the video, you learned that convection currents occur in the air, water, and on land. And you also learned that cool fluids always have a higher density because their particles are energized. Therefore, the particles have to be cramped together. Whereas, hot fluids will always have a lower density because their particles are energized and moving. Therefore, they are spread apart from each other. Low density fluids, when surrounded by high density fluids, always rise and high density fluids when surrounded by low density fluids always sink because of their varying densities. So I'm going to be conducting two different trials. In one trial I'll be placing hot water on top of the cool water and on my second trial I'll be placing the cold water on top of the hot water. So please pause the video, create your hypothesis on what you think is going to happen on each experiment and why and then continue this video when you're done. So I'll just be pouring in the hot water and then I will be adding the red food coloring to the hot water and I will stir it. And then afterwards I will add the green food coloring to the cool water. Now I'm going to use this plastic slit. I'm going to be placing it on top of the hot water so that a vacuum is created. So when I flip the cup over to put it on the cool water, the water doesn't spill out. Now, as you can see, the waters do not mix. This is because of their varying density. The cool water on the bottom has a higher density. Therefore, it will want to sink and stay down, whereas the hot water has a lower density and will want to rise and stay up. Now, in the second trial, this, that's the hot water and that's the cool water. Now, I just switched them around and I'm just going to be placing the slit on top of the cool water, creating the vacuum to make sure the water doesn't fall out. Now as you can see the waters immediately mix. This is because again of their varying densities as you can see here. The hot water that was at the bottom has a lower density and wants to rise up. So that's why it went up and the cool water has a higher density and it wants to sink so it went down. And that is why they mix. Okay, so this demo I will be conducting will be about the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is an effect on the wind that causes it to spin around the Earth's circumference as it reaches its destination, rather than just going in a straight line to its destination, like so. So let's pretend the ball is the wind and the plate is the Earth. Normally what should happen is the that the wind will move from one end of the Earth to the other in a straight line, like that. But in what happens in reality is that the Earth rotates. The Earth's rotation causes the wind to go into a different pattern. So instead of going straight like it would before, it ends up in a different location. It takes an alternative route and is deflected from its natural path. This is the Coriolis effect. <laughs> 